Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon and happy new year. Welcome to this first webinar of 2023. Uh, welcome to the Mindly Wellbeing webinar. Um, we'll give uh, each other probably 20 more seconds uh, because I see some more people joining and then we get started. And uh, while we wait, as you can see on the screen, you can ask questions anonymously using the link. You can ask questions on the chat. We have received a bunch of questions in the last uh, two, three weeks. Uh, they piled up. Um, and uh, I have chosen some topics uh, from those questions itself so that uh, you can get the answers. Keep the questions coming. It's good to see the engagement. Okay, let's get started. In any case, this recording will be available on our YouTube channel. And uh, for those who are joining late, they can catch up on that. I'll summarize at the end as well. Thank you so much for joining this uh, weekly webinar where we talk about uh, emotional well-being, mental well-being, topics that we are a bit shy to uh, talk about in general. Uh, there are many places where this is still uh, a, a bit of a taboo topic. Uh, uh, there is a stigma uh, that is there and people are quite shy. In fact, I've realized that people are shy for two reasons uh, and one of them is actually very good because they don't want to hurt someone. Uh, what if I say something wrong and uh, I don't know what to speak when someone else in front of them is going through uh, a situation. Uh, so they really are uh, shy from a good uh, perspective. At the same time, uh, and it happens with me as well, uh, we are worried, what should I say? Uh, will I be judged? And uh, what if uh, somebody thinks this and that about me? And uh, this is a valid point why people are shy to talk about this. But like any topic, the more we talk, the more we share, um, it becomes a diminishing problem. And many people who have come back and shared with me that, um, I used to be shy, but once I started talking, uh, this became my group. This became my support system. Uh, even uh, my family was uh, uh, coming later to support me, but first I had my group to support me. So uh, thanks everyone for being there and being there for each other. We are not alone in this. Uh, at Mindly, we do uh, workshops on well-being. We use uh, concepts from cognitive behavioral uh, therapy, uh, entrepreneurship and um, uh, and philosophy and some common sense models as well. The reason I take these models is instead of using one specific thing, I take the good parts of variety of things. We all have our own lives and we are not born psychologists with all the answers. So better to take the best parts of things and apply it to our own situation. Uh, depending on the sector you come from, depending on the city you come from, depending on the age group you come from, we all have different situations. So we have to customize these things. There is no one solution. In fact, uh, um, a bit about myself. My name is Jeev Sahu. Sahu, like Yahoo. And uh, I've spent uh, uh, just above uh, two decades in the uh, technology industry and then finance industry and uh, uh, a bit into entrepreneurship and uh, impact investment. And uh, I felt that when life happens, we really don't have a lot of support uh, in uh, as far as mental well-being is concerned until things go really wrong. And I really didn't want to wait until things go really wrong. Uh, I felt general anxiety is like having a mild flu. Uh, we live with it. We keep itching uh, some our nose, uh, thinking, oh, this is all right, I, I'm, I'm fine. But we go into uh, a, a vicious circle. 
uh, where we get anxious. We try to find solutions on YouTube and read books and become our own psychologist. And then the problem comes back and, and so forth. So I thought, hey, why don't we start sharing the solutions that worked for me uh, across a variety of uh, situations. So looking at the questions that we have, one of the questions that um, people have asked is related to reframing situations. And reframing uh, is a big part of uh, cognitive behavioral uh, science. Reframing simply means to look at it from a different perspective, uh, to, uh, I mean, to look at it from a different place. Uh, the view completely changes depending on where you stand. Um, but the question that came uh, was asking, is reframing like telling lies to ourselves? Oh, so something bad happened in our lives and we are not feeling great about it. Are we kind of telling lies to ourselves that, you know, everything will be fine and uh, all, all is well and pull up your socks and these things happen to everybody and uh, the other way of putting when I was your age, blah, blah, blah and so forth. We, we hear all these kind of topics. Is that reframing? And uh, my short answer is no. Unfortunately, reframing is not that simple. But fortunately, it's even simpler. What I mean to say is there are certain characteristics you have to see whether the reframing that you are uh, doing is correct or not. And let's take an example. Now, um, I, I have been in situations and we, I have friends in the situation where um, they, they lost money in their business. And uh, you can say, okay, I did some mistake and people live with guilt or regret. They are very scared about uh, restarting the business or restarting any business and it affects relationships. Now, the first thing you do when you reframe the situation, think of it as a physical place in the past. You visit the past, but you don't live there. That's first step. We visit the past to learn something about what happened. If the business failed, in this particular example, why it failed, what exactly happened, what can we do about it? Those are lessons we can pick up. Uh, and after the business failed, let's say I had uh, uh, relationship issues, my fr friends were not there or something of that kind, you have to figure out what are the lessons we can pick up. And the first thing to see clearly is to consider it as something separate from the present moment. It's something that happened in the past. The moment you separate it out, it is easier for you to look back. Otherwise, the, the situation is still in the present. You're constantly living it in your mind. Okay, so that's the first thing. Just separate a bit so that you can take a step back and look at it. Secondly, when you reframe, when you try to put a positive spin into it or a, a, an alternative spin into it, which is helpful, the key word is helpful. Reframe doesn't mean that uh, it's an excuse. Reframe means how can I use that in a good way? Is, it, is the new way you are looking at it helping you? If it is not helping you, it might be an excuse. If I did something and things did not work and I say, yeah, everybody of my age failed in that situation and so forth. But what is my learning? What am I using that uh, situation to uh, move up next? Is it being helpful? If it is not being helpful, it's as good as an excuse. So reframe is not an excuse. Think about it. And the third thing in reframing, if you have done it right, you'll feel good about it. So if you have, if in that particular example, we said uh, we lost money, uh, the things did not work, I, I had this lesson learned, it is helpful and so forth, but I'm still feeling like, shit, it doesn't help. Let's figure it out, how else can we reframe that you can feel good about it? And that comes in, if you have been watching our videos, we'll, when you align your values with your action, you will feel good because what you will do is going to do something good to you, right? If you are not feeling good, uh, uh, even after reframing, you have put a positive spin on it. It is helpful, but it's still miserable, right? So that is the correct way to reframe. First of all, separate the past. It's a different place. We can't be carrying it every day, okay? We can't be carrying it right now. It, uh, uh, separating it helps. 
put a positive spin that is helpful and makes you happy and then move on living the next step in future okay so that is that i hope that answers the question depending on that i had another topic coming uh, remember we talk about our pc inside our heads in psychology pc is pathological critic uh, i i mean in common words is personal critic and uh, I, I i am here to uh, introduce an alternative way of looking at pc our personal cheerleader now what is pc you remember that voice that uh, comes each time you want to do something new or you want to meet someone new or you want to go somewhere else so you are taking a big decision you are buy, buying something big or doing a big expenditure or a big investment or something where, where you are emotionally invested and you hear that voice that voice that stops you and it's always some version of i told you so <laughs> you see what happened i told you so it a normally negative voice and uh, although we may think it's our own voice or something or, and and uh, people who have been more observant might associate oh it's my wife's voice or mom's voice or dad's voice or something of that kind it's none of that what it is is a combination of all the disapproving voices that you have had since childhood and believe me originally they meant well they meant us to be safe for example if you're running too fast as a child and somebody said don't run too fast just walk uh, nicely they meant very well in in this situation it was meant for our safety and uh, later as we grew up that became a habit and we started stopping ourselves and depending on the kind of friends we had if the friend said hey jeev you are stupid and just because i wanted to belong i said yeah man i am stupid and then that became that critical voice in my head and today even if i'm trying to do something right that voice comes back and says i'm stupid and interestingly i listen to it thinking it's my voice see remember in reframing we discussed that we have to separate ourselves so here first of all separate it it's not your voice i'm responsible for it because it's in my head but it's not my voice it's a combination of all the disapproving voices that i heard might be teachers might be law enforcement might be friends might be movies might be myself and so forth right now what it does is it keeps a list of all your mistakes in life it's very very quick in picking it up like you try to do something new it will remember that year what happened remember what what happened to that guy's friend and so forth it keeps a stack of all these like a gallery of mistakes keeps watching you like keeps collecting data like an evidence oh i'm going, this is going to come and bite me in the past in in the future and uh, <laughs> tries to be a false friend it comes like a friendly voice but it's not our friend okay now we got to switch this to our personal cheerleader and before i switch this to personal cheerleader let me share something about friendship yeah so these were some of the pictures i should have <laughs> brought in if you're watching the screen speaking of friendship how would you treat a best friend in fact consider yourself very lucky if you have a best friend and and especially as an adult because um, the the more we grow the more conditions we put and many of us we don't have great friends uh, many of the friendships are quite conditional but let's say we have best friend lucky you lucky me how would i treat my best friend one of the key concepts is trust a uh, key concept is you can be yourself with that best friend uh, you can it's not that best friend is not critical best friend can say the worst things but for your good okay but and they really mean good um your best friend always watches out um you watch out for them they watch out for you there is no transaction uh, there is no you know nobody keeps a track of like how many times you have helped and how many times they have helped you just are there and uh, you can say something without regretting uh and so forth so there is that that concept the reason i am introducing the best friend before i go to our personal cheerleader is that we have to become our own best friend now it's very difficult to quickly find a new best friend or become our own best friend especially depending on our situation if we have trust issues or if we have fears how can i be my own self and and many a times in fact for even for me i was worried 
what I, 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 I don't know whether I should trust myself in this situation. I'm always looking for this validation or that validation and so forth. Well, in that case, again, separate this and think and start creating an avatar in your mind. Um, just create a, a version of your best friend who is doing not just the opposite of your personal critic, but a bit more. So let's start with the opposite. What is the opposite? Instead of keeping a list of your mistakes, your best friend, your personal cheerleader is now going to keep a list of everything that went well in the last day, last week, last hour, last year and so forth. And the smallest of things matter here. Remember, see, we have decades of personal critic to, uh, uh, to erase or nullify. So we have to start stacking up our inventory of all the good things that have happened. Uh, for every sad thing that you remember, make a list of two or three good things. Even if you have made a nice salad or nice cup of coffee, don't discount it as, oh, come on, this is so small. I am thinking of winning the Nobel Prize. Well, if you win the Nobel Prize, wonderful. I mean, I'm seriously happy for you. But if you have made a great cup of coffee and that made you felt feel happy, why not pat yourself on the back? Why not count it as a good thing? that increases uh, 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 increases your sense of feeling better and start making this. So instead of keeping a list of mistakes, you keep a, mist a list of successes as well. So the next time you're trying to do something nice and your critic says, remember what happened when you talked to that uh, person? Oh, you also remember 10 things that happened when you talked to that other person, 10 good things that happened, right? Not just the 10 bad things that happened. Secondly, keeps on watching you to find your mistakes. Your personal cheerleader keeps on watching you to keep patting you on the back, to keep uh, making a record of all the good things so that you, you don't forget that uh, you did it, okay? So it still keeps a watch. It's, it's still awareness is increasing, but in a positive way. So then we switch towards what, what friends are doing, trust, openness, because it's you and you, right? We are, we, are, we are using the example of a friend just to make it easy. But you can always say anything to yourself. So why not say the right thing? Why not say the good thing? Why not say uh, something that makes you feel better? No one is listening. Don't worry. No one is listening. You are listening. So tell the right thing. Tell the good thing. Tell the nice thing. And increase that. Trust yourself at that point. Your critic comes and says, man, I al you always take the wrong decision. You always do this and that and so forth. And if you, if you keep practicing the cheerleading, you say, ah, that's not right. I also take good decisions. You remember that particular thing? Yeah, it was not as bad as that decision, but it was better than something. And the more we practice, we start creating an inventory of, you know, the good things of life. So... We talked about reframing in the first section. Reframing had three things. One, separate yourself from the past so that you can actually do something about it. Uh, visit the past, don't live there. Visiting is fine as a tourist place. Learn the lesson out of that situation. And uh, think of, is it being helpful? If it is not being helpful, might as well be an excuse we are giving. Yeah, these kind of things happen to every such person or blah, blah, blah. The grapes were sore kind of thing, right? No, it has to be helpful. And after reframing, it should make you feel better. Okay, that's the right way of reframing. And even the toughest of situation, we go through loss in life. We go Loss can be of various uh, kinds, right? It can be loss of time, loss of money, loss of people, loss of love. We go through a variety of situations and it's very tough to reframe when you're going through those situations. It's, it feels, uh, in fact, one of my other clients the other day mentioned that when I was trying to reframe about some uh, losing someone in life, it felt I'm disrespecting that person. Oh, these things happen, life and death happens, etc. No, that is not reframing. That is just another way of talking. Reframing will make you feel better. Reframing will give you a lesson in life. Reframing will help you in life. Then you look at your inner critical voice. It makes you feel down hundreds of times per day. Our inner critic keeps on talking to us, by the way. So instead of having an inner critic, our personal critic, choose joy 
choose a personal cheerleader okay and start switching the reason i said all these characteristics is so that you can catch them if i know that this voice is not my voice easy to catch if i know that this is the critical voice which is judging me easy to catch and if i know that uh, this is not helpful and uh, if 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 this voice is a real friend it would actually help me do something better easy to catch the moment you catch you can switch how do you switch think of a friend how would you treat my, how would i treat my friend and think of that personal cheerleader treating you be your own hero and heroine in your minds and and feel good about it it's you and you and life is precious so why not feel better about it the more you practice this you'll make an inventory of such things to come back to your version of normalcy i'm not saying you will become you'll solve all problems of life and and become happy forever you'll come to your version of normalcy um this i mean this reminds me of another question that had come we tend to try to solve life's problems in 30 minutes when i ask somebody what's your purpose today this half an hour what's the micro purpose it can be like if i am taking my kid to school that's enough purpose for that particular time and that can make your emotional well being better mental health health better and so forth but the moment we look at that question people try to think what's the purpose of my life oh come on that's a very big question let's not go into that right now let's do one step at a time okay so treat yourself better today please treat yourself better for the next 5 minutes next half an hour and make a habit out of because we have already made a habit of criticizing ourselves for decades so if we could criticize ourselves for decades why not praise ourselves for few more minutes and and increase the inventory that will help us improve our emotional health and mental health um i have been watching some more uh, questions over here and what i'll do is i'll make a list for next tuesday uh, keep watching keep following if you have found it useful please subscribe uh, please share it with somebody who found it useful the recording will be available on our youtube channel um i'm sharing this because when i went through life across variety of jobs and variety of work or investment or whatever else we do in life normal life nobody comes and give these answers and uh, i thought let me find some answers and share with you if you are doubting yourself if you are feeling down uh, send us a message and uh, let me go to the next slide yeah we are, the email is team at mindly.uk and there is a link below with a qr code as well you can scan it pause the video and uh, scan it or just go to bit.ly uh, ama mindly and ama in this case stands for ask me anonymously in that particular link nothing is recorded so i do get spam it's worth it guys it's worth it because there are 80% of people who actually ask the right question and i send them the answers uh, through these recordings uh, through these uh, broadcasts okay um, so please feel free the reason i made it anonymous is so that you feel safe in that situation okay it's all about feeling safe and the last bit i want to tell you before we close because i'm looking at the time here as well i know there is some stigma or taboo and you are trying to solve things yourself interestingly we all are i'm doing the same the rest of the audience is doing the same so many people in this world are doing the same but doesn't it say that we are not alone if you change the perspective it's not just that we are all trying to find solutions but it also says that we are not alone so this is why why is this topic uh, a topic of taboo or stigma uh, i mean uh, it, it should be something that is part of our general health so don't feel shy and don't feel lonely and uh, keep asking keep talking come on the channel uh, share your comments and uh, together we will feel better remember you are your first priority keep taking care